One year ago today, on September the 22nd, we debated a motion on taking action on a crisis in the ambulance service and the worst accidents and emergency waiting times on record. Given the reality of staffing levels on the ground, I implored the Cabinet Secretary back then that our hardworking NHS staff and indeed the Scottish people need to know what to expect as winter approached. Well, here we are again, still spiralling out of control. In the last week ending September 19th, 2021, 74.4% of patients at A&E were seen within four hours. A year later, last week, this had dropped to 63.5%, the worst on record. Elsewhere in the system, cancer waiting times are also at their lowest on record, from 84% in June last year to 76% now. So much under the SNP government's control is going from bad to worse. Vulnerable children are unable to access mental health services with over a quarter not seen by a specialist within 18 weeks. Waiting times for routine treatments are mounting. Over 10,000 Scots have been waiting for two years for treatment, an eightfold increase on last year. Hospital delayed discharge at a record high. Ambulance waiting times over two hours have increased ninefold in four years, and yet the Cabinet Secretary was patting himself on the back just yesterday. We understand the pandemic has had a significant impact on the delivery of health services, but the fact is that the situation has been getting worse in 2022, not better, despite the pandemic receding. Many issues also predate the pandemic, such as staff shortages, which are the result of successive years of poor SNP workforce planning. One year on from our September 21 debate, our amazing nurses, doctors, allied healthcare professionals and paramedics remain overworked and undervalued and at breaking point. Yet, one year on, the same SNP minister remains in charge, clinging on to his flimsy NHS recovery plan. The stats don't lie. This is a record-breaking cabinet secretary. The SNP delivery personified. But what does the cabinet secretary do when faced with hard facts? Well, he might selectively compare stats from health services elsewhere to provide what the first minister calls context. Or he might pass the buck and imply that shattered frontline workers are to blame for any waiting times, seriously undermining staff morale. And I'm afraid any backtracking statement sent out late is akin to sticking a Band-Aid on an unwashed, gaping wound. For patients who need treatment in Scotland, they don't want context, they want competence. But if you insist on context, how about this? Nearly 70% of nurses in Scotland feel that patient care was compromised on their last shift due to staffing levels. Yesterday evening, I spoke to Norrie. Norrie's mother is 96 and has pneumonia. Norrie's mum was taken to her Ayrshire Hospital a &E department last Thursday at 8 o'clock. The department was incredibly busy, too busy. Still, Norrie's mum was triaged within 90 minutes. The staff were clearly doing their very best, but let's face it, they can't conjure up more nurses or hospital beds. And there were no spare beds, none at all. Norrie's mum spent 40 hours on a trolley in a busy corridor, cold, and beside automatic doors that opened and closed every couple of minutes. Norrie's mum was frightened and crying. She was breathless and disorientated, all alone because family were not allowed to be with her. On Saturday afternoon, 40 hours after she first presented, she was moved to the clinical assessment unit where she is now. And I can say that she is beginning to feel a bit better. Now, can any of us imagine how we would feel if this happened to our own granny or mum? And Norrie really knows about healthcare. He's been a GP for 40 years, and he cannot accept that this is what awaits his patients and his family. But Norrie says, sadly, his mum's experience is not an exception. And he says it's not the fault of frontline staff who go, who go above and beyond. Health is a devolved matter. The SNP has been in government for 15 years. The people of Scotland deserve to have dignity and respect while vulnerable. Mindful 
of last Thursday's First Minister's question, I asked Norrie if it gave him a measure of comfort to know that Scotland's waiting times were better than elsewhere. His response, well, I can't repeat the words, so let's just say comparisons like this are meaningless and unhelpful for the people of Scotland suffering. Norrie does have a question, though, for the Cabinet Secretary and the First Minister. He asks if they agree that in Scotland today, it is morally abhorrent for his 96-year-old mother to lie on a trolley in a cold corridor for 40 hours. Our Cabinet Secretary, I will. Um, would you um, welcome the fact that there has been an immediate improvement in waiting times uh, since the data was published? Sandesh Gohani. Well, the SNP are patting themselves on the back because of a 2.5% increase. 2.5% was the improvement in A&E waiting times. And that is what you want to stand up and proudly declare. When it's come down from 74%, the target is 95%. My word, that is disgraceful. Our Cabinet Secretary is the fifth SNP Minister to be in charge of health, a straight line of SNP MSP since Nicola Sturgeon held the position from May 2007. And after years of SNP mismanagement, dedicated NHS staff are burning out. Workforce planning is so poor, nursing vacancies are up 25% in a year and now stand at over 6,000. And in the past year, around 15,000 workers left the NHS, the highest number in a decade. And the, re the root cause of many of the issues with A&E and routine treatment lie in the lack of flow through a hospital. The member must now conclude. Thank you. There is a lack of beds in NHS Scotland, 716 fewer than at the peak in 2014-15. An urgent action is required. The NHS recovery plan is failing to have a demonstrably positive effect on waiting times. It's not working. Let's admit it and let's rewrite it ahead of this winter. Thank you. And I declare an interest as a practicing NHS doctor. And I move the motion in my name. Sorry.